lemon and made up red and a brave giant video review. Sit back and get ready to show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. This time we'll be checking out Gym Power in Mutant Planet, developed by Digital Concept and published by Luricio in 1992. This play guide goes out to our special backer Johnny Smoiso. On the title screen we can see some nice parallax effects going on and we can also see the coder of this game, Fernando Velez, which was his only game on the Amiga, and Christophe Gomez was the project manager, and Guillaume Dubal was also the creator of the graphics. You can see the music was Chris Hulsbeck. title screen has some amazing music on it so let's just press fire and check this game out in gym power we play as a guy running around with a gun and it's our job to shoot him up everything on that level and get through to the checkpoints we can also collect some special bonuses, SB, which will give us some points, we can also collect some power-ups, some time extenders, and some extra lives as well. Periodically, we'll also uncover some gems, and collecting those gems means that we can get a bit more score and this is supposed to be a high scoring run. Unfortunately, we did play this game all the way back in 2019 and I've already forgotten how to play. Playing this with the normal fire at the moment. This isn't with auto fire, but well, I will turn on auto fire eventually because this game is made very much easier with auto, and EXT gives us an extend which extends our weapon. The screen might flicker occasionally, and I think this was released in interlace mode. I'm not quite sure, but the emulator does a good job of de interlacing this screen so it's not as flickery, and you really don't want flicker in an Amiga game. Unfortunately, these lethal drops of acid will kill us, and the dogs, and the spikes, and everything else on this level, so you really don't get too much time to hang around. Occasionally you'll find bigger, better bosses and things that you have to dawdle over and kill. That includes these dragons. And I think this is with the auto fire on. Makes that job easier. Let's just collect these keys as well. And another shield, which only just lasts in time to get to the next area. But oh no, it's worn off. So actually that shield is pretty useless unless you're fighting those dragons. You also have to make sure that these enemies don't fall onto our level by mistake which kills us and fall off this platform to collect that and right on the edge to collect this key. 
see we have three keys in the top corner and those won't really be important but we'll find locked doors a bit later on then you can see we only have 30 seconds left on the clock that time is reset periodically and now we have over two minutes and now our first boss appears yes if we hang around this small tree then will be a safe spot and the boss can no longer hit us. That's another power upgrade and it's fantastic to see those upgrades appearing. It's not quite turrican, we can't actually fire in multiple directions, we don't have a rebound or a surround laser but what we do have is some fireballs and as long as we avoid these lethal barrels and get the pixel perfect jump sorted out we should be able to progress through this first level without too much hardship and yes the timing has to be observed wait for those things to be on the floor and then jump also lure out this guy as well sometimes you have to lure out guys in order to save us from getting killed Some enemies and some guns I don't think you can kill so we'll have to avoid things and it's as much as you can do in this game to avoid anything because usually if you're gonna die that's it and the difficulty curve really does ramp up there eventually so you can't really take much for granted at this stage let's just kill the enemies before we collect that time that means we've got tons of time left to get through the level and really rushing through these levels is the thing that will kill us and I'm really rushing through them at the moment just for the sake of this review and when we definitely played this in the competition I took my time and took ages over every single one of these jumps look at that right on the edge there we seem to be disappearing through that raindrop and the collision detection is usually very accurate and if you have your elbows out just a bit too far you're probably going to die and that's just one of the quirks of this game Jumping controls also have to be mastered and if you're trying to rush like this and you don't wait to time things then you'll be struggling simply jump up and then across or jump up and then across and then that should be it but we get a shield as well so you can see even at this stage trying to rush the game I've already wasted quite a few lives and we're safe in this corner so let's grab that clock so we could have been on quite a few extra lives by now but trying to rush the first level is definitely not what you want to do and if you're on maybe four lives by now it's probably a good idea to reset the game and press escape and try it again Gym Power was also released on the Atari ST the MS DOS machine and the Sega Genesis and on the Genesis version they've added some driving levels and some more shooting levels and definitely the Genesis version goes on for a lot longer and maybe they've sorted out the difficulty curve as well I'm not sure I've never played that game but it's definitely a step up from the Amiga version and some players said that the Amiga version was simply too hard As you can imagine at this stage we have to time our jump and if we miss time that will land on the spikes and it's at this point which I definitely would have reset the game if I was trying to get a high scoring run because that's the point where you need all of your lives and if you can get past that point with all the lives like six of them then you should be able to get through the game and if you've only got three lives by now by tripping over things and not bothering to time things then that's your fault and the veterans of this game say it's way too easy because as long as you've memorized the whole thing then that's no problem you can see the monk behind us that reminds us of another game that we've played and wow. 
this isn't risky woods, we don't have to rescue monks, and we don't have those lighting effects. What we do have is difficult traps, and this is the very final difficult trap, and if you can get over this one in one piece, then you can write your ticket through the game, and if you can't and you mistime that, well, you'll just have to run whilst the shield's on and make the best out of it. Yes, it is absolutely possible to time all of these things to perfection, and I didn't do that, so what I'm going to do is go to a save state, give myself some more lives, because really, five lives by this point is needed, and this game isn't too hard at all. <laughs> First boss in this case is a bit of a joke, you can see it clears the entire screen area with its bulk and if you get trapped within that of course you deserve to die because sitting all the way over to the left is a safe spot and you don't have to die on that case. Moving on to a shoot em up level, you should have six lives by now, and that means that if you can memorise this area and stay in this particular spot, then you should be able to deal with most of the oncoming traffic, and if you can take on these guys as they appear, it means you can destroy them and get lots of score. High scoring run, I definitely did try to milk as many of these as possible, but look at that, really stupidly getting in their way. Trying to rush the review means I'm making tons and tons of stupid mistakes, which I didn't actually do when I was trying to play this game in the competition. see some tremendous scrolling going on, lots and lots of colours, even though this is a simple OCS game, and we even get some agony fish as well. Gives us an extra two lives, so we should be up to eight lives by now, and having done that, then you should be able to get through onto the next section, which is another boss, and it doesn't really make much sense that it's giving you all these bosses and shoot em up sections, but yet again, if you stay in the right place and you kill everything pretty quickly, then you shouldn't die on this section, it's not a difficult boss, and it won't kill us if we stay in this bottom corner, and then go out and stay in exactly the right place, which I think is about here, and shooting it from out here means that we are invulnerable. The boss will then move backwards and try to kill us on that spike, and if you weren't ready for that, it will kill us on that spike, and then we go all the way to the top side, and it's really easy from here, there's nothing really which will kill us except for the exhaust of the ship, and this thing, I've no idea what it's supposed to do, but obviously if you've memorised these traps, then there should be no problem. At this point, the ship will start flashing, and we can actually go all the way through the middle of the ship without dying. As you can see, only the jet thrusters will kill us. This is, I think, level 5 in the game that we're on already. We've got through a couple of shoot em sections and one run and gun section. You can see we're dying pretty rapidly, and you might notice we might have a few more lives because, uh, yes, we are going to be using save states in this game to try and get further with it. I'm not quite sure whether I loaded one up or whether I didn't, but surely with five lives it should be possible. And look at this, my favourite, another timing puzzle. Guess what I'm going to do? Yes, I'm probably going to die, because I can't time these timing puzzles, and you're supposed to wait for when they're at the top and going down, so when they're on the way back up again, you should be on top of them, 
And these things are really great. These Venus fly traps will fire on target if we allow them. So you'll have to anticipate that if you're going to kill them. And these things remind me of Venus the fly trap as well. Let's lure out another enemy. And that's a vulture. And sometimes luring out enemies is a really great thing to do. So let's waste all that time and risk getting the extra time. You don't have to do this, but of course you have to land in the right place. Otherwise you're wasting your time. And that was a complete waste of my time, as you can see. So some of these jumps do require patience. The very thing that I haven't got during this playthrough. This again is a very tricky spot, you'll have to memorise the pattern and simply jump up to kill that thing without risking a life and if you fall on that step and jump up you should be able to kill it. Same thing again with this one and as long as we're not rushing into the action we've got the time and it's fantastic to see that parallax scrolling in the background and all those colours as well. So these things aren't indefeatable and we can actually shoot this one from on that edge. So there are tips and tricks to be mastered so that we can get through this safely. Great to hear those voice samples as well. One up as you pick things up and power up and all the rest of it. And that's of course taken from the Turrican series, which I think this is a homage to. And this wasn't created by Factor 5, this was, as far as I know, created by a Spanish guy, Fernando Valez. And this was his only game on the Amiga. Look at that zombies reminding us of ghosts and goblins and ghouls and ghosts. So this game really did borrow heavily from a few different genres and a few different other games as well. And another extend. Let's bide our time and get that. Certain annoyances in this game will kill us if we don't bother to time our actions. Let's just go and get this bonus over here. And then this is our very last life. And these spikes will kill us. So if we don't time this perfectly, we're going to die. And one thing about this game is when you die, it will take you to the game over screen and you'll lose all your progress. So what I actually did was I loaded up a save state here just to show you the rest of this level. And... That's great, but you'll notice that the time is ticking down and there's no enemies on this section. I think there were some more man-eating plants here, but there are no enemies because I've already run through this section already. I'm just showing you. And look at that. The game box art cover was ripped off. You can see Jean-Claude Van Damme as well. And Emile from Robocop is also on the cover. And of course, this guy from Retrograde on the Commodore 64. So there are various rip-off sections in the game, but there are some nice sections as well. And these random zombies aren't too hard because you'll see on the floor when they're about to jump out. And ghosts and goblins and Super Robin Hood as well, if you've ever played Super Robin Hood. So there is a lot to like about this game, even though it is trying to rip off other games. There is a lot going for it. The weaponry, the music, the graphics, the scrolling and the enemies. Timing has to be observed and if you can jump over all these bits by jumping up and then jumping across 
then you shouldn't die and there isn't any reason to die on most of these traps as long as you've memorised the pattern and look at that, jumping up here am I short of lives? well if we jump up here then we'll get another one for free and that means if we're struggling the game is even taking it easy on us at this stage find some Apidia bees as well. You might notice that there are more than 16 colours on the screen, in fact there are 200 colours on the screen, and there are at least 3 play fields of running at 50 hertz, and there are at least 12 layers of parallax scrolling on some of these levels. That means this game isn't a ham game, it's not an extra half bright game, I don't think, I think they did some fancy raster copper tricks just like the... just like Kid Chaos that we saw and if you spend the time doing some fancy tricks you can get further but look at that standing right on the edge yet again not timing our way, not jumping and some of the magazine reviewers said that the jumping was a major issue in this game it's not like Switchblade 2, you can only do a tiny little jump. You have to make sure that you get those enemies, and some of these enemies reminded me of Turrican 2. really racing through the level now and I like the details in the background, all these leaves and the forest and even something scrolling in the foreground and look at that, this star which reminds me of Wonder Woman's headband, this star marks the end of the level and as long as we can kill that plant and observe a bit more timing we can get an extra life before we go on to the next section and I'm probably going to give ourselves yet more lives because you really should have six lives by now and this is the next boss again it's not too hard as long as we know where it's gonna go it moves down into the corner and then if we go down into that same spot that's the very spot that's safe so we just have to go to where it's just been and then it will descend the screen so we can go over it go around it and then go to the bottom corner again and then basically repeat the whole process all over again you might notice its eyes need to be shot and then we can shoot its mouth area as well Sometimes it takes quite a few tries to get used to the enemy patterns and it might take quite a few lives as well but let's return to the map and return to the next area which area is it I wonder is it another shoot up section or is it a run and gun Now move into one of my favourite areas of the entire game and as long as we have auto fire stay roughly in the middle and keep blasting away hopefully we can destroy enough of these enemies to not get killed and the graphics are amazing on this level the scrolling is amazing the enemies are amazing and it will also start to rain as well and throw pumpkins towards us and I really do love the effects on this level See, it's all fun and it's all action and there is some variety in the game, it's not just a run and gun shooter and just like maybe the Turrican games, they have thrown in some shoot em up levels and some bosses as well to make this game a bit more different and it's great with the scrolling and the music and all the enemies and you can see the lighting changes as well 
and that subtle lighting change as it begins to rain is another element which I upload and all these things running towards us it's frantic as you can see but it's a tremendous feeling even though I'm sweating trying to play this game it's still a tremendous feeling when we get through it end of all that you'll also find things that you need to dodge and that reminds me of Delta, the Delta game on the Commodore 64 and all those other games where you needed to dodge stuff just like this. So there's nothing original here but for the Amiga there wasn't many of these running gun shooters and Barobder was a real waste of time so really the likes of Fire and Ice and Rough and Tumble and the Turrican games were the best that the Amiga had to offer and I only discovered this game pretty recently in fact so let's move on it's another boss so let's pile on in and let's destroy all these things before they kill us and it will try to jump up but the top corner is safe and then after all that what you'll have to do is to defeat the lunar module Yes, in this game the lunar module jumps out to kill us and as long as we time that and go under that then it shouldn't hit us but due to my pathetic timing skills it has done and yes you might wonder can you not just go into the top diagonal corner and shoot diagonally yes you can you can take your time on this you've got two minutes to kill the lunar module so you don't have to rush like me and if you're wondering yes you can also hold down the joystick button and that will release some smart bombs not that we really need those and look at that wandered directly into it again all the way over to the left is absolutely safe as long as we avoid its bullets and these ridiculous stupid mistakes are actually more infuriating for me to watch than for you so when we're getting through this we'll get through it and hopefully with a few more lives to tackle the ending Again, we can go straight through the boss and now we're on to the final level of the game and it doesn't take too long to get here it's just that you'll be dying a lot on the way this final level is also one of my favorites even though it's really difficult and especially if you can't time your way over jumps like me But it does give us an extra life periodically so as long as we are careful on these sections which I definitely won't be but as long as we are careful then we can avoid yet again being hit and the bats are here as well from ghouls and ghosts look at that skeleton in the background all these graphics details that you might only notice when you're watching this you won't be noticing them when you're actually playing it at the Lemon Amigo website there is a vast array of opinions some say that this game is a doddle and a joke and a pushover and I think Turrican 3 is the easiest running gunner on the Amiga with Turrican 2 behind that because it gives you tons and tons of lives and Turrican 1 behind that so I don't think it's the easiest Amiga running gun on the system by a long way because the rest of the complaints said that this was way too difficult final level has by far the greatest music in the game I love it and it was also featured on one of my top 400 compilation videos that I made some years ago to advertise what's coming up on the channel Looking at the magazine scores, Sio Amiga gave this the lowest score, they gave Jim Power 74%. Tony Dillon complained that there was no high score table whatsoever, and as soon as you die you'll lose your score. 
The small jumps mean that the pixel perfect jumps are annoying, and Tony said that you're much better off playing Switchblade 2 that we've reviewed already. Going back to yet another save state, Zero give this 76%, the current Lemon Amiga score is 78, Amiga Power give this an average 78%, and Amiga Mania give this 79, Amiga Action awarded Jim Power 83, Amiga Joker gave it 83, The One gave it 84, Amiga Format gave it 85, CVG gave it 87, Amiga Force gave this 89%, so the top score went to Amiga Computing, which gave this game 90%. Daniel Whitehead said that it was very hard indeed, but very playable and very addictive. He praised the 200 colours on the screen, parallax scrolling and the bit planes as well. This has been coded to perfection. He also loved the tremendous Chris Hughes Beck music, which gives this game an average score of 8 out of 10. this monster if you stay here then you are absolutely safe and if you wander away from that spot then you might die and if I die just like this it's because I'm stupid and I don't stay in the safe spots and I'm still trying to rush it for the sake of this review. This is almost the end of the game now and we won't be reaching the end, we'll only be reaching halfway there and there are still lots and lots of traps to go. lots of these floating platforms on this very end level and they are quite fun but also very tricky later on and we'll also get some massive power ups as well and this being the end level the final one before we meet the final boss and there are maybe five of these creatures to kill and these might remind me of another game yes if you kill all these five guys before we jump then we shouldn't get killed, so even at this stage the game trying to be helpful to us and it's not trying to be too hard, but the game is infuriating once you start making those mistakes. So it's a game of two halves, you either love it or you hate it, I have massive respect for this, having played this in the competition, and I wish that some of the things weren't absolutely pixel perfect and requiring us, look at that, right on the edge, requires us to take some risks and I like all of the colours, the scrolling, the music and all the rest of it. It's just that I wish that this game was a lot easier just like the Turrican series so I could just romp through this from the start very quickly with auto fire and get some massive enjoyment out of it. At the moment we are about to die on this devil and he's pretty tricky because you have to avoid that we can see he's firing on a trajectory so yet again we didn't have to die there but we did die stupidly so the aim of this game is to not to rush through it to not to rush into all this instant death and I think a screen bomb a screen clearing smart bomb is precisely what we need right at the end but I died and that gives us the end of the game Now returning to the 22nd of February 2019, this is my actual play, this is my actual long play, and this is what I recorded at the end of all that time and effort. So I didn't record the game itself at the time, which is yet again stupid, but I did record me facing the final boss. So let's see what happened, this is real time footage of me versus the boss, you can see I've got tons of lives left and we've got loads of smart bombs as well. You can see some demo like effects as we try to kill this beast and I think if you have any smart bombs at this stage it's really a good idea to use them up and if you have any lives remaining you'll 
perhaps be dying on this section. It's not too difficult. Uh, you can see we've killed the boss. That means we get to rescue Samantha. Congratulations, you have destroyed the ignimious evil whatever it said. Thank you for saving me, Jim Power. Hey, no problem. So, thank you once again for watching another play guide to how to play this game. And hopefully you can complete it yourself. It's not a pushover, even though some people say it is. And I have great respect for this game and what I tried to do on a normal OCS Amiga. Thank you.